Hello to the chicos and the chicas. Welcome back to another book review. And boy, oh boy, this is gonna be a absolute ripper. Um, if you go back to a couple of videos, a fair few videos, in fact, earlier, uh, you will find my two main book recommendation videos. And if I could have a wish about my YouTube channel, then apart from the fact that I would like to get another 100,000 subscribers, it would be that if I could, I would redo that video because I now have Johan Helsten. I hope I say his name correctly. Johan Helsten, Mastering Opening Strategy. Dudes, this book is worth its weight in gold. This is an absolute masterpiece. And uh, actually, when I had my talk with uh, Chess Dojo, uh, Kostya Kavutsky, he also brought this book up and I went like, sorry, mate, haven't read it. And boy, I do regret that I couldn't uh, offer my two cents about this book because, as I said it, a must have. One of the reasons why I love this book so much is actually because I feel 100% justified in my efforts in regards to chess education because this book is basically a written version, a book version and a slightly expanded version of my chessable courses. It follows a similar structure. It follows an almost identical mindset and even the examples are actually matching. I came across a lot of games here that I mentioned in my courses and I came across a lot of games that I wanted to put in my courses but for various reasons I ended up not doing. So what is this book about? This book is about how you can actually understand your game of chess irrespective of your opening repertoire by understanding opening strategy. And when you are talking about, we are talking about opening strategy, it's not some obscure idea of each opening has a special maneuver and trick to it. Nah, stuff this. Basics. Absolute basics. Four main concepts. Development, just like my course. Then there is crime and punishment, which is something I was thinking about making a course which essentially translates for materialism versus dynamic chess, which I talk a lot about on this channel. Third chapter, Battle for the Center, my first course. And fourth is a little bit of an obscure topic, topic called restriction. Each topic can be seen on the top, by the way. Um, and that's it. Four main themes, a book that is three, just shy of 370 pages. So he's really not trying to come up here with some obscure concept that uh, you will have to learn for each and every. Nah, stuff that. Four things. Four. Fight for the center. Get your pieces out. Punish your opponent when they are greedy. And try to restrict their pieces when they want to develop. And that's it. And I'm telling you now, it's a hard book to read. A, a difficult book to work through by yourself. But nonetheless, I really, really highly recommend you to do it. And despite of what I just said, this is a book that you cannot start learning and um, working with soon enough. One of the very few books that I would recommend almost to anyone, like unless you are a total beginner who just learned how to move the pieces, if you wanted to find a book from where you want to pick up your chess concepts and your chess understandings, Helston. Helston is your man. Oh, my course is, but now I'm reviewing him, not myself. This book is going to teach you beautiful chess habits that will allow you to be a very good player. And I tell you one more reason why this book is brilliant. Because it's not a puzzle book, but it still functions as a, I'm showing your position, and now you need to tell me what you think is right here. And so it's an incredibly awesome mix of teaching material and test material. And I need to drink. And also, excuse me, also very good in the sense that the way how it's done, and it's very similar in this regard to another book that I believe I reviewed earlier, is that it offers you a fair number of examples deeply analyzed, by the way, 
trademark of a brilliant book explains to you everything through a variety of excellent games and really is not stingy like i'm looking at uh, game 20 whatever and the analysis still goes on but then after he explains to you something really really thoroughly he goes like your turn baby and he offers you a game still analyzes it still explains what's going on but at the crucial point he goes what would you do and very often and i really like this the question is not your turn the question is what is your move provide a short sequence or a plan and that is such an awesome uh, concept i always use it uh, in my coaching too and again i feel reinforced that what i'm doing is right don't tell me a move no i'm not interested in that tell me a sequence tell me how you see that where you are now is going to turn into what exactly five moves down the track if you tell me a move it tells me you have no depth whatsoever in your head about what you are doing reinforces this beautiful habit absolutely love it for it and the other thing that this book does really really well is that he times the questions really well so he doesn't ask you the question when the position is already on fire and all you need to do is to pull the trigger on a winning tactic he's actually sort of teaching that crucial um skill that i find by the way i'm now at that point in my coaching career when this is now my challenge that i'm trying to embrace to teach that skill which is not really a skill but really a good chess sense where you already know that you are ahead and that you need to play forcefully because if you do then down the track will come a puzzle situation so now we are taking a steps back a few steps back and i'm not delivering a puzzle i'm delivering a position from where if you play well enough there will be tactics and a lot of people club level and higher fail to recognize this one step earlier point as a result of which very often they don't get there i could translate it to play good chess but that would be stupid and uh, way too simplistic so let me show you exactly what i'm talking about here he presents a beautiful game played by a very close friend of mine who was a, a teammate of mine for 10 plus years and my main rival actually back in the day in hungary peter raj an extremely aggressive attacker as white against uh, someone whose name i forgot because i didn't recognize the name when i read it uh Beleski from the german league uh, French DE4 variation, um, don't do that. Um, bishop D3, C5, castle, stakes, stakes, knight C5, bishop G5, H6. And he says, your turn. And I can guarantee you that if you are a player of 1800 and all the way to 2000, 2100, whatever, there is a solid chance you would not look upon this position as white should have some massive advantage here you would be thinking like right they attack my bishop maybe i should take maybe i should take maybe i then should develop my queen and then take it from here i look very good and so we miss that momentum that very very important part of chess which i call thinking out loud in your head when you go like hang on a tick i've got four pieces out my king is castled this dude has two pieces out no king safety to speak of i should be able to wreck havoc here hardcore wrecking havoc and that's exactly what my good friend uh peter did here took f6 check now all this had to be seen in advance and you can only calculate this if you have the drive if you have that desire right here to go like nah that's garbage I must destroy this position. If you don't call it like that, you're never gonna make the right move. And so this book is teaching you this habit, this mindset that you recognize this as a potential position that leads into puzzle lands. And that's exactly a very seamless transition here. Check, bishop d7, and here comes the amazing knight takes e6. So if it was in a puzzle book, it would start from here. And more than likely, anyone would find it uh, within a reasonable rating range. But if we start from here, do you have the ability to go, white must be winning here, one way or another, and I won't rest until I figure it out. That's what this book does so well. Excuse my drinking, but my 
throat has been destroyed in the past two weeks. So once again, take take, and uh, after bishop d7, knight takes e6, bishop can't take because of uh, the pin. The pawn can take, but then after check, everything falls, and black dies. And the most spectacular one is knight takes c6 when after bishop d7 the queen can't retake because of knight f6. Breathtaking. So, oh, but it has to because king e7 is mating well. Whoops. So we go back. And we find that in the game black played knight d7. A terrible backward move. And again, everyone knows that we are totally winning here. But it took a few moves to come get here. And only the right mindset can get, can get you here. Queen h5, king up. Rook d1, rook e1, and again, when you watch this, it's like, yeah, it's perfect. Like, it makes perfect sense. I would play those moves, and I'm not doubting anyone who says I would play those moves. They are easy moves. To get here and to be able to call the shots when you think it's the right time is what this book excels at. 95, and uh, here comes an absolutely breathtaking finish. And actually, if there ever was a shortcoming in the book, is that at multiple points, I would want this book to offer, and now it's your turn scenarios, because here it doesn't. And I think that this capture sequence with take, check, take, check, 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 and checkmate, wow, baby, is well worth an extra diagram and an extra question in the book. That said, this is literally the only thing I can mention on the negative about Johan Helsten's absolute masterpiece, mastering opening strategy. I'll show you an example from the last chapter, which made me the most curious, because that was the only one that I didn't think about turning it into a course of my own. And that is, or I have already turned it, because I made my courses before this came out. Um... Did I actually? Good question. When was this thing released? 2020, uh, 2012. So he actually came before me. Stand corrected. Um, his This book came out way before mine. So, restriction. Uh, a rather tough concept because very often we misunderstand what it means, but usually this is related to space, which I also like to talk about. Nimzo, I think it's a Milov game. Mill of Cotronias. So we are talking about 2600 plus GMs on both sides. C5, D5, Bishop back C5. I talk a lot about this C5 push in similar concepts and setups. And here it is actually sound because A, it comes with a tempo. And two, because white gets to set up this pawn chain without black being able to destroy it. Knight D7, Knight G3, B5, gaining more space. E5. Bishop e2, note that knight, e knight f5 here is pretty bad because of takes, takes, and mm, takes here. Hanging the knight, and if I take, then this is a check. And that's why he plays bishop e2, not only, but partly. Takes, takes, rook e8, now preparing for knight f5, white castles, b6, c6, bishop, uh, knight back. And we here can see quite a bit of restriction, but it's not really worth much if then black can develop, develop, and consolidate. Milov goes, mm -mm, not happening, bro. I'm going to kill your bishop with f5, and these guys are never going to move in this game. And from here on, this turns, in fact, not here on already, it's a positional masterpiece. Uh, knight d, king h1, knight e4, take, take, Bishop e3, bishop f6, and f5. Instantly pulls the trigger, cares not about material, because he knows that he will be essentially a piece in a rook up. Queen h5, f7 is on. Bishop takes, and like, look at this. Full army. Full army against three pieces. Because these two dudes... Oh, no, I just ruined my color pattern. Or oh, whatever. Yeah, those two guys are not coming out. E3, rook f4, rook d8. Check out this variation. Bishop c3, rook e4, queen f8, queen takes f7, check. Hello? Queen takes rook e8, mate. Oh, baby, chess is beautiful. And so, um, Cotronias went rook d8, h3, time trouble issues, but now he converts with ease. 
and black fell apart here. The mate is essentially unstoppable without uh, shredding material takes. And this is the point when black realized that there was no adequate retake because queen takes loses a piece, pawn takes uh, loses a king, and uh, the other pawn takes uh, is also losing the king because it's illegal. And so he played some sad king of eight and resigned after pawn takes f7. So, long story short, get this book, you will become a better player with better habits, better understanding of openings, but more importantly, better understanding of chess in general. So, Johan Helsten mastering opening strategy, an absolute masterpiece. And one more thing, which I said already earlier, this is a book that even if you feel challenged, I recommend you to revisit time and time again. Because even if you find the concepts difficult, they are the right concepts. So even if you can't quite grasp how and why it works, it's always a good thing to be exposed to the correct mindset, the right way to approach the game. And so this is a book that is a five out of five star from me for sure. And definitely a book that if I could, I would somehow squeeze into my uh, book recommendation video. Thank you guys for watching. I will be back with more soon. Bye.